Percy La Barrera with the Investing News Network. And here with me today is Rory Townsend, Senior Research Analyst at Wood Mackenzie. Rory, thank you so much for joining us today. No, happy to be here. All right, so we're here at PDAC, is one of the biggest conventions for the resource market. Um, how are you finding uh, investor sentiment toward base metals this year? Yeah, good. I mean, I think there's quite a lot of uncertainty being driven by external sort of macroeconomic factors and, and policy impacts mm -hmm. as well. But I think from a fundamental perspective, um, the, the sentiment is pretty good. Right. And today here at PDAC, you gave a presentation about uh, sync. Uh, can you share with, your, with our audience what you expect will happen to sync prices this year? Are prices going to make a comeback? Yeah, sure. So definitely in 2019, we're expecting to be the, the fourth successive year of metal market deficits um, with a metal market deficit this year of around half a million tons, um, which we're expecting to further draw down uh, metal stocks, providing fundamental support to the zinc price, which we're seeing peaking at around $3,700 a ton in the second half of this year. So hopefully a good year for zinc. And last year, I guess one of the main factors that was impacting the market were the U.S.-China uh, trade talks. Um, what do you see happening in that front this year? Are you optimistic and how it will impact the sink market? I mean, in regards to be optimistic, it's, it's always a bit difficult. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it can be sometimes it seems to be they're on the right track and there's going to be some sort of resolution or at least a progression towards, uh, you know, negotiations between the two parties, between US and China. But then you see some setbacks. I, th I think investor sentiment is definitely going to hinge upon whether we see progression with, with the, the escalation or de-escalation of the trade disputes. Um, and that's going to flow through directly into metal prices. Um, we saw it last year. Um, from a fundamental perspective, the, the zinc market improved with metal stocks falling through the year, um, but the metal price also fell, um, and that was really being driven by that negative sentiment um, with the escalation of the trade disputes between the US and many of its trading partners. So we'll see how the year plays out, but um, I think there's been you know, a little bit of positive sentiment this month with you know, s some indications that there is going to be some sort of a resolution or at least communication between you know, US and China. Right, and another factor that has been impacting the market is warehouse inventories. What do you see will happen uh, in that front? Will we still be seeing a decline during the year? And what is your perspective on supply in general? Yes, so, I mean, we're, we're still expecting a decline in inventories through the year. Um, and as I said, they should provide fundamental support to the zinc price. Um, it's really going to be dependent upon whether smelters can increase utilization rates from around 82% last year to 86% this year. And if they can't, then we're going to see that refined metal markets deficit swell um, and a further pull down in metal stocks beyond sort of what our base case forecast is going to be. Right. And do you think that they can increase that output smelters? What is your view? Is it? I mean, we're seeing an, a significant concentrate surplus this year. Um, so there should be increased availability of concentrate, but we are seeing some potential issues around concentrate quality. Um, and the Chinese smelters are also facing a lot of scrutiny from environmental mm -hmm. authorities. Um, one of sort of the largest victims is the 450,000 ton per annum Zhuzhou smelter in Henan province, um, which was planning on operating through 2019, taking advantage of increased treatment charge revenue and elevated prices. However, its local authorities have thought to have prohibited continued operation and that plant closed in December. So there are significant headwinds with regards to whether those utilization rates can be increased and maintained at those levels. All right, and just looking over to demand, what do you think will drive demand of sync uh, this year? Or are there any factors that investors should be paying attention to? I mean, zinc demand is, of course, heavily dominated by, by China. Um, so it's, it's really going to be quite dependent upon their sort of policy and things. We've seen clear signals from the Chinese government that they want to pump more money um, into infrastructure spend to stabilize the economy. Um, this is supposed to be focusing on uh, new type infrastructure, such as the rollout of the 5G network, ultra high voltage electricity transmission lines. Um, the high-speed rail network and all three of these sectors are large consumers of zinc in the form of galvanized steel. Right. And my final question for you today, uh, many of the people that are watching us today are investors. What would you say is your best suggestion for someone that is looking into jumping into this base metal sector mm -hmm. or the zinc market in particular? I, th I think a key eye definitely in the short term has to be on, on smelter capacity utilization. Um, and also sort of moving out to the median term around 2022. 
if we're seeing additional smelters being constructed, but also beyond 2022, we're seeing the need for additional mine supply. Now, whether that's on projects or mine life extensions, um, we still need that additional mine supply. And there are plenty of projects in the pipeline, but it's really going to be dependent upon market expectations, whether they're, whether they're progressed. Um, and we've seen some projects sit in the pipeline for a number of years. So it's, it's really going to depend on sort of those factors. All right, Rory, thank you so much for joining us today. All right, thank you. Once again, I'm Priscilla Barrera with the Investing News Network. And here with me today was Rory Townsend, Senior Research Analyst at Wood Mackenzie.